In this tutorial, I will take you through activating your copy of Crossworks, installing support packages, and creating, compiling, and debugging a simple application using an STM32 based evaluation board. If you do not have access to a supported evaluation board currently, you can follow along using the CrossStudio ARM simulator. Documentation relating to this tutorial can be found by visiting our website and clicking on the CrossStudio tutorial link. Each copy of Crossworks must be registered and activated before it will build projects or download and debug applications. We are going to use the Crossworks License Manager to request and activate the software. Requesting an evaluation key is very similar and I will mention the differences as they occur. From the top menu, select Tools, License Manager. Then choose either Evaluate Crossworks or Request Activation after purchasing. In either case, choose whether to lock the license to your computer's MAC address or to your system's primary disk. Do not, however, choose VPN Ethernet adapters as these MAC addresses frequently change. Otherwise, the selection is down to personal choice. Click the Send Email button to create an activation request addressed to license at rowley.co.uk. If you do not have a default email client installed, Copy the activation request text and paste it into an email addressed to license at rowley.co.uk. When we receive your request, we will reply with a key which you can use to activate Crossworks. From the top menu, choose Tools, License Manager, click the Activate Crossworks option. Enter the activation key you have received from us, then click Install License. The new activation should now be visible in the list of installed licenses. If you request an activation key outside of office hours, GMT, please be aware there may be a delay processing the registration. If this is the case, you can continue the tutorial until you reach the Building Project section. You will need to activate Crossworks before you can build. Before a project can be created, a CPU support or board support package suitable for the device you are targeting must be installed. A support package is a single compressed file that can contain project templates, system files, example projects and documentation for a particular target. I'm going to use the STMicroelectronics Nucleo F030R8 board support package to create an example project that will run on the Nucleo F030R8 evaluation board. If you do not have access to a supported evaluation board currently, you can follow along with this tutorial using the built-in ARM simulator, which is part of the generic ARM CPU support package. Note that the generic ARM CPU project templates can be used to target real hardware for devices that don't currently have a suitable support package. However, it is highly likely that you will need to modify memory map files, startup code, reset scripts, and the loader program in order to support the target. This is outside the scope of this tutorial, but should you wish to do this, see the documentation included in the generic ARM CPU support package for more information. From the main menu, choose Tools, Package Manager. If you're using the ARM simulator, click on the ARM CPU support package or other support package you wish to use. In my case, the Nucleo F030R8. Note that double-clicking on the package link will change the status to install. Double-clicking again will revert the status to no action. Click the Next button and you'll be presented with a list of actions the package manager is going to carry out. Click Next again to download and install the support package. Upon successful completion, you will see a list of the newly installed packages. Click Finish. To view the installed support packages, choose Tools, Show Installed Packages. You should see the name of any support packages you have installed. Click on any support package to view the support package page in the Crossworks browser window. This page provides more information about the support package and links to any documentation, example projects and system files that may be included in the package.
To start developing an application, we need to create a new project. To create a new project, choose File, New Project, or from the keyboard, press Ctrl plus Shift plus N. The New Project dialog box appears, and we are presented with a number of project templates. The number shown is dependent on the number of packages that you have downloaded. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Nucleo F030R8 board. So I choose the template described as an executable for ST Microelectronics ST Nucleo F030R8, or an executable for generic ARM Cortex A R processor if you're using the ARM simulator. In the name dialog, type in tutorial as our project name. Next, choose an appropriate place to store your project files. Crossworks will create a folder with the name you have given your project in this directory. Click Next. The Choose Common Project Settings dialog now appears. Here you can customise the project by altering a number of common project properties, such as an additional file format to be output, or the library support to include if you use printf and scanf. Double-clicking a project property or its value will display either a drop down menu of potential valid values or a text field in which you can type arbitrary values. These settings can be changed after the project is created in the Project Explorer. For this tutorial, the default values are fine. Click Next to display a list of the files Crossworks will add to the project by default. You can uncheck any file you plan to add manually or that you know will not be needed. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will uncheck main.c. The links to system files group shows the links to Crossworks system files that will be created in the project. Because these files are links, the default behaviour is that they will be shared with other projects, so modifying one will affect all projects containing similar links. To prevent accidental modification, these files are created as read-only. Should you wish to modify a shared file without affecting other projects, first import it into the project. This will be demonstrated later on in the tutorial. The Project Files pane shows the files that will be copied into the project. Because these files are copied to the project directory, they can be modified without affecting any other project. If you uncheck an item, that file is not linked to or created in the project. Click Next to view the default configurations that will be added to the project. Again, you can uncheck any you know will not be needed, but for this tutorial we will leave the defaults unchanged. Here you can specify the default configurations that will be added to the project. See Creating and Managing Projects for more information on project configurations. Click Finish to complete the new project's creation. If you are using the ARM simulator, this will create a project for a generic ARM device with RAM located at address hex 0. This is fine if you're going to run this example on the simulator. ARM hardware, however, is rarely so accommodating because memory will be mapped at different addresses, target specific startup code may be required to initialize peripherals, different techniques need to be employed to reset the target, and target specific loader applications are required to program flash memory. To create a project to run on hardware, you should instead select a template from the project type matching your target. That will create a project with the memory maps, startup code, reset script, and flash loader for your target. If you are using a supported package, such as the Nucleo F030R8, you will find the relevant files created for you. The project name is highlighted in bold to indicate the active project, and in our case only project. If you have more than one project, you can set the active project by using the drop down box on the project toolbar, or by simply double clicking on the desired project node. Files are arranged into two groups. Click the little arrow symbol next to the project name to reveal them. Source files contains the main source files for your application, typically header files, C files and assembly code files. You may want to add files with other extensions or documentation, files in HTML format for instance. System files contain links to source files that are not part of the project but are required when the project is built and run. 
In this case, the system files are thumb underscore crt0.s, the C runtime startup, written in assembly code and stm32 startup.s, a target specific startup for stm32 based microcontrollers. If you are using the ARM simulator, you will also see an ARM startup.s file, which contains the target specific start code and exception vectors when working with the ARM simulator. Files stored outside the project's home directory are indicated by a small purple shortcut symbol at the bottom left of the icon, seen here. These folders have nothing to do with directories on disk. They are simply a means to group related files in the Project Explorer. You can create new folders and specify filters for them based on the project file extensions. To do this, right click on the project node and select New Folder. Give the folder a name. In the source folder, enter or browse to the physical directory holding the files you wish to filter. Then, in the filter specifications, add the extension you are filtering for. In my case, .html, so I enter the filter using asterisk wildcards. Click OK. Thereafter, when you add a new file to the directory, it will be shown in the Project Explorer folder, whose filter matches the new files extension. We will set up the example project with some files that demonstrate features of the Crossworks IDE. For this, we will add one pre-prepared file and one new file to the project. To add one of the existing tutorial files to the project, choose Project, Add Existing File, in response, Crossworks displays a standard file locator dialog. Use it to navigate the Crossworks installation directory, then to the tutorial folder, where you should select the fact.c file. Click open to add the file to the project. The Project Explorer will list fact.c in the project items source files folder with a shortcut arrow because the file is not in the project's home directory. Rather than edit the file in this tutorial directory, we'll place a copy of it into the project's home directory. In the Project Explorer, right-click the fact.c node. From the pop-up menu, click Import. The shortcut arrow disappears from the fact.c node, indicating that our working version of that file is now in our tutorial project's home directory. We can open a file for editing by double clicking the node in the Project Explorer. For example, double clicking fact.c opens it in the code editor. Our project isn't complete because fact.c is only part of an application. To our project, we'll add a new C file that will contain the main function. To add a new file to the project, do the following Choose File, New to open the new file dialog. In the Templates pane, select C file to indicate the general type of file. In the Name edit box, type main.c. Crossworks opens a new file in the code editor. Rather than type the program from scratch, we'll add it from a file stored on disk. With the new empty main.c in the foreground, choose Edit, Others, Insert File. Using the file selection dialog, navigate to the tutorial directory. Select the main.c file. The file text is now pasted into your main.c file. Next, we'll set up some project options. Up to this point, you have created a simple project. In this section, we will set some options for that project. You can set project options on any node of a solution. That is, you can set options on a solution-wide basis, on a project-wide basis, on a project group basis, or on an individual file basis. For instance, options you set on a solution are inherited by all projects in that solution, by all groups in each of those projects, and by all files in each of those groups. If you set an option further down in the hierarchy, that setting will be inherited by nodes that are children of, or grandchildren of, etc., that node. This provides a powerful way to customise and manage your projects. 
we will define a C preprocessor definition that will apply to the entire tutorial project. This means every file in the project will inherit our new definition. If, however, we were to later add other projects to the solution, they would not inherit the definition. If we wanted that, we could set the property on the solution node rather than the project node. To set a C preprocessor definition on the project node, right click the tutorial project in the Project Explorer and select Edit Properties from the menu or Properties icon in the top menu bar. The Project Properties dialog appears. Click the Configuration drop down at the top left and check that the drop down reads Common. This is the default configuration. Scroll down the list as necessary to click the Preprocessor Options, Preprocessor Definitions property. Double click the property name or value field to display the empty Preprocessor Definitions window. And in that window, type the definition define underscore me. When you change between debug and release configurations, the code generation options change. This dialog shows the options used when building a project or anything in a project in a given configuration. Because we put the above new definition in the common configuration, both debug and release configurations will use this setting. We could, however, set the definitions to be different in debug and release configurations. If we wanted to pass different definitions into debug and release builds. When a property is changed, it will be highlighted indicating that the property is overriding the current hierarchy. To revert the property to its original hierarchical configuration, click on the property and select Use Inherited Value. Now that the project is created, it's time to build it. There are some deliberate errors in the program that we need to correct. Doing that is the next step in this tutorial. The first thing to do is set the active build configuration you want to use. Select ARM debug from the active configuration. This means that we're going to use a build configuration that generates ARM code with debug information and no optimization, so it can be debugged. If we wanted to produce production code with no debug information and optimization enabled, we could use the ARM release configuration. However, because we're going to use the debugger, we shall use the ARM debug configuration. Using the build toolbar, click the build tutorial button or press F7. Crosswork starts compiling the project files, but stops after detecting an error. The output window shows the transcript, which contains the errors found in the project. The file main.c contains two errors. After compilation, Crossworks moves the cursor to the line containing the first reported error and displays an error message in the output window. To correct the error, change the return type of factorial from void to int in its prototype. To move the cursor to the line containing the next error, press F4 or choose Search Next Location. The cursor is now positioned at the debug underscore printf statement which is missing a terminating semicolon. Add the semicolon to the end of the line. Using F4 again reveals that we have corrected all errors. Pressing F4 again wraps around and moves the cursor to the first error. And you can use Shift plus F4 or Search previous location to move back through errors. Now that the errors are corrected, build the project again by pressing F7. The transcript shows there is still a problem. The remaining error is a linkage error. Double click fact.c in the Project Explorer to open it for editing and change the two occurrences of fact to factorial. Rebuild the project. This time the project compiles correctly. A summary of the memory used by the project is displayed at the end of the build log. The results for your application may be different, so don't worry if they don't match. Developers are always interested in how much memory their applications use, 
especially when they are working with small embedded microcontrollers. The Project Explorer can display the code and data sizes for each project and individual source files that are successfully compiled. To add or remove this information, use the Options pop-up menu on the Project Explorer toolbar to check or uncheck the Statistics column. The Code column displays the total code space required for the project. The Data column displays the total data space required. The code and data sizes shown for each C and assembly source file are estimates, but good ones. Because the linker removes any unreferenced code and data and performs a number of optimizations, the sizes for the linked project may not be the sum of the sizes of each individual file. The code and data sizes for the project, however, are accurate. As already mentioned, your numbers may not match these exactly. The Project Explorer is very versatile. Not only can you display the code and data sizes for each element of a project, and for the project as a whole, you can also configure it to show dependencies for a file. As part of the compilation process, Crossworks finds and records the relationships between files. Crossworks uses these known relationships when it builds the project again to minimise the amount of work required to bring the project up to date. To show the dependencies for a project, use the Options button on the Project Explorer toolbar to ensure that either Dependencies under Node or Dependencies in Folder are checked. Dependent files are shown as subnodes of the file that depends on them. In this case, main.c is dependent upon cross underscore studio underscore io dot h because it is included with a hash include directive. It is also dependent on underscore crossworks dot h because that is included by cross underscore studio underscore io dot h which in turn has a hash include directive to debug io dot h. You can open the files in an editor by double clicking them so having dependencies turned on is an effective way of navigating to and summarising the files a source file includes. It is useful to know the output files when compiling and linking the application, and Crossworks can display this information too. To turn on Output File Display, click the Project Explorer toolbar Options button and verify that Output Files Folder option is checked in the menu. Once checked, output files are shown in an output files folder under the node that generates them. Click that folder's triangle symbol to expand the view of the output files. We can see that the files fat.o and main.o are object files, produced by compiling their corresponding source files. The linker script tutorial.ld, the map file tutorial.map and the linked executable tutorial.elf are produced as part of the linking process. As a convenience, double-clicking an object file or a linked executable file in the Project Explorer will open an editor showing the disassembled contents of the file. If you change your project and rebuild it, thereby causing a change in the object or executable file, the disassembly view updates to keep the display's contents synchronised with the file on disk. The Memory Usage window can be used to view a graphical summary of how memory was used in each memory segment of a linked application. Choose View, Memory Usage, or press Ctrl plus Alt plus Z. For the tutorial project, the Memory Usage window shows this. In my case, the Flash segment has been located between here and here. The Flash is 64 kilobytes in length and has 63.2 kilobytes of unused memory. Expanding the flash segment by clicking it, Crossworks will display all the program sections contained within the segment. Similarly, the same can be done with the RAM to view section placement. For a more detailed view of how your application is laid out in memory than the memory usage window provides, you can use the symbol browser. It allows you to navigate your application See which data objects and functions have been linked into your application, what sizes they are, which sections they are in, and where they are placed in memory. 
To activate the symbol browser, choose Navigate Symbol Browser or press Ctrl plus Alt plus Y. In the symbol browser, you can see sections and their sizes. For example, the dot vectors section containing the arm exception vectors is placed in memory between here and here. The dot init section containing the system startup code, the dot text section containing the program code, and the dot ro data section containing read only data are all placed in memory. The dot heap section is 128 bytes in length and is located at this starting address. The stack size can be adjusted in project properties. Right click the project node and then click Edit Properties, choose Linker, Runtime Memory Area Options. By double clicking on the current value, a new dialog box will appear. The heap size can then be adjusted. Whilst in the Runtime Memory Options, we can also see the stack section is 256 bytes in length. The stack size can also be adjusted in the same way that we adjusted the heap. Drill down in the symbol browser by double clicking a node. Let's try this with the .txt node, which contains the program code. Crossworks displays the individual functions that have been placed in memory and their sizes. Here we can see that main is 64 bytes in size and is placed in memory between here and here, and that factorial is 42 bytes in size and occupies addresses from here through to here. Just as in the Project Explorer, if you double click a function, Crossworks moves the cursor to the line containing the definition of that function. So you can easily use the symbol browser to navigate around your application. You can print the contents of the symbol browser by selecting its window and choosing print from the file menu or print preview if you want to see what it will look like before printing. Crossworks prints only the columns that you have selected for display and prints items in the order displayed in the symbol browser. So you can choose which columns to print and how to print symbols by configuring the symbol browser display. We've touched on only some of the features the symbol browser offers. To learn more, refer to the symbol browser section of the Cross Studio documentation where it is described in detail. Our sample application which we've just compiled and linked, is now built and ready to run. In this section, we'll concentrate on downloading and debugging this application and on using the features of Crossworks to see how it performs. Before running your application, you need to select the target to run it on. Choose Target, Connect, then double click on the interface you wish to use. For the moment, I'm going to attach to the ARM simulator. After connecting, the target is shown in the status bar. The colour of the target status LED in the status bar changes according to what Crossworks and the targets are doing. White, no target is connected. Yellow, target is connected. Solid green, target is free running, not under control of Crossworks or the debugger. Flashing green, the target is running under control of the debugger. Solid red. Target is stopped at a breakpoint or because execution is paused. Flashing red. Crossworks is programming the application into the target. Double clicking the target status will show the target's window if it is not already visible. If the target can provide the information, the core simulator target can accurately count the cycle spent executing your application, so the status bar shows a cycle counter. The STLink v2 will not bring back this data, which is why I've used the ARM simulator for this part of the demo. To demonstrate this, I will download and run the program. This is done by selecting Debug, Go, or pressing F5. By default, Cross Studio will build the necessary project files and then flash the firmware, eventually pausing at the start of main. To continue the program execution, click Debug. Go or hit F5 once more. The program executes and we can see the instruction counter clocking up. This counter can be reset by simply clicking it periodically with the mouse. 
as you can see here. To program the nuclear board, I will need to change interface to the STLink V2, which is done by double clicking the STLink V2 node in the target's interface. Crossworks will run a program until it hits a breakpoint. We'll place a breakpoint on the call to debug underscore printf in main.c. To set the breakpoint, move the cursor to the line containing debug underscore printf and choose debug toggle breakpoint or press F9. Alternatively, you can set a breakpoint without changing the cursor's position by clicking in the gutter of the line to set the breakpoint on. The gutter displays a red dot on lines where breakpoints are set. Breakpoints can be viewed in the breakpoints window by selecting view, then breakpoints. The breakpoints you set are stored in a session file associated with the project. So your breakpoints are remembered if you exit and rerun Crossworks at a later date. The breakpoints window updates to show where each breakpoint is set and whether it's set, disabled or invalid. You can find more detailed information in the breakpoints window section of the documentation. To start the application, choose debug, go or press F5. The workspace will change from the standard editing workspace to the debugging workspace. You can choose which windows to display in each of these workspaces and manage them independently. Crossworks loads the active projects into the target and places the breakpoints you have set. During loading, the target log in the output window shows its progress and any problems. By default, Cross Studio will stop program execution at the beginning of the main function. This behavior can be modified in the main options menu by going to Tools, Options, Debugging, Set Initial Breakpoint At. To continue program execution, choose Debug, Go, or again hit F5. The program stops at our breakpoint, and a yellow arrow in the gutter indicates where the program is paused. Step into the factorial function by selecting Debug, Step Into, by pressing F11, or by clicking the Step Into button on the Debug toolbar. Now step to the first statement in the function by selecting Debug, Step Over, by pressing F10, or by clicking the Step Over button on the Debug toolbar. You can step out of a function by choosing Debug, Step Out, or by clicking the Step Out button on the Debug toolbar. You can also step to a specific statement by choosing Debug, Run to Cursor. To allow your application to run to the next breakpoint, choose Debug, Go. Note that when single stepping, you may step into a function whose source code the debugger cannot locate. In such cases, the debugger will display the instructions of the application. You can step out to get back to the source code or continue to debug at the instruction code level. There may be cases in which the debugger cannot display the instructions. In such cases, you will be informed of this with a dialog and you should step out. Being able to control execution isn't very helpful if you can't look at the values of variables, registers and peripherals. Hovering the mouse cursor over a variable will show its value as a data tip. You can configure Crossworks to display data tips in a variety of formats at the same time using the Environment Options dialog. You can also use the Autos, Locals, Globals, Watch and Memory windows to view variables and memory. These windows are described in the Cross Studio User Guide. The call stack window shows the function calls that have been made but have not yet finished executing. That is the list of active functions. You can learn more about this in the call stack window section of the Cross Studio user guide. The tutorial application uses the function debug underscore printf to output a string to the debug terminal in the output window. The debug terminal appears automatically whenever something is written to it. Press F5 to continue program execution and you'll notice that the debug terminal appears. In fact, the program runs forever, writing the same message over and over again. To pause the program, select debug break or type control plus period. 
This section describes how to debug your application at the register and instruction level. Debugging at a high level is fine, but sometimes you need to look more closely into the way your program executes to track down the causes of difficult to find bugs. Crossworks provides the tools you need to do so. Next, we'll run the sample application again and look at how it executes at the machine level. Stop the program execution by pressing Shift plus F5 or by clicking the Stop Debugging button on the Debug toolbar. Now, run the program until it stops at the first breakpoint again. The Registers window can be used to view CPU and peripheral registers. To display the state of the registers for the Active Processor mode, select the Groups drop-down and ensure that the CPU context slider is switched to the green position. There are four register windows, so you can open and display four sets of CPU and peripheral registers at the same time. You can configure which registers and peripherals to display in the registers windows individually. As you single step the program, the contents of the registers window update and any change in a register value is highlighted in red. The disassembly window can be used to debug your program at the instruction level. It displays the disassembly of the instructions around the currently located instruction, interleaved with the source code of the program, if the source is available. When the disassembly window has focus, all single stepping is done one instruction at a time. This window also allows you to set breakpoints by clicking in the gutter of lines containing instructions on which you want to set a breakpoint. To restart debugging without reloading the program, you can use Debug Restart. Note that when you debug from restart, no loading takes place. It is expected that your program resets any data values as necessary as part of its startup. You can stop debugging using Debug Stop or Shift plus F5. You can attach the debugger to a running target other than a simulator using Target Attach Debugger. This section describes how to debug applications that were not built using Crossworks. To keep things simple, we shall use the application we just built as our externally built application. Start by creating a new externally built executable project. Choose File, New Project, or press Ctrl plus Shift plus N. The Create New Project dialog appears. Select the Create the Project in a New Solution option. We'll create an externally built executable project. So I'm going to scroll down to the ST section, then I choose an externally built executable or ST Microelectronics ST Nucleo F030R8. As it is the board I'm using. Type externally underscore built underscore tutorial in the name field, which names the project. You can use the location field or the browse button to locate where you want the project to be created. Click Next. Once created, a Choose Common Project Settings dialog will pop up. In the Executable File field, type the path to the tutorial.elf executable file we generated earlier. Now you have created the externally built executable project, you should be able to use the debugger just as we did earlier in the tutorial. For more information or to download the free trial of Crossworks for ARM, please visit our website www.rowley.co.uk or email sales at rowley.co.uk. Thanks for watching.